Cove, 1941. A group of high school kids, uh, four of us to be exact, uh, started the second oldest diving club in the country called the Manta Ray Club. All these cliffs here were covered with abalone. All the cracks in the rocks had abalone in them. On the minus tides, people came out and gathered them. Uh, same was true of lobster. We found them in the tide pools here. The California black sea bass uh, used to swim around the edges of the kelp bed or through the kelp beds. I've personally seen them here the size of Volkswagens. I've seen them up to, oh, at least 300 pounds here. Uh, white sea bass were the same way. They'd come in and school. The kelp forest. It may appear to be thriving at the surface, but a different reality lies below. Like so many other ecosystems today, kelp forests have seen a dramatic decline in animal size and abundance. A number of species are ghosts, no longer filling their former ecological roles. Why have so many species virtually disappeared from the kelp forest? We know some answers. Kelp forests themselves are massively impacted by the oceanographic climate. The oceanographic climate includes El Ninos, in which the nutrient poor water starves the kelp plants, to massive storms, which might remove almost 100% of the kelp forest in, in one storm. So there's a great deal of natural variability in the kelp forest. And this variability affects fish. But after decades of study, we now know that giant kelp rebounds quickly when conditions are favorable. Yet much of the animal life has only declined. Why? Scientific evidence suggests we have harvested too many animals too fast for too long. To combat declines, we've regulated fishing through limits and bans on specific species. And in coastal waters, we have even outlawed the use of gill nets, a particularly destructive form of fishing that took a tremendous toll on kelp forest species like the white sea bass. Protection has helped reverse the decline of some depleted populations. Divers are beginning to see giant sea bass once again in kelp forests around the Channel Islands off California. Yet despite the protection of individual species, and the efforts of fishermen to comply with regulations, we still have ghost forests. How can we help restore the kelp forest and other essential ocean ecosystems? New research supports adjusting the way we manage fisheries. Scientific studies show the value of creating networks of marine reserves carefully selected areas of the ocean in which all species and their habitat are completely protected from harvesting of any kind. In existing no-take reserves, fish abundance nearly doubled in as little as two to four years. The size of fish increased by almost one-third, and three times more offspring were produced. As sea life increases in protected areas, it naturally spills over to adjacent areas where fishing can take place. Not all people support this course of action. For some, it may spell a loss of income or changes in time-honored traditions. But experts believe there will be far greater long-term costs if we continue to manage individual species while ignoring the ecosystems that sustain them. Less than 1% of the ocean is now protected in no-take reserves, and few such reserves exist in U.S. waters. La Jolla's ecological reserve is a rare exception. The future of the kelp forest lies in our hands, but creation of marine reserves will not happen without strong public support. What will our legacy be? We can settle for telling future generations about the ghosts of kelp forest past. 
or we can choose to take an active role to restore the riches of this valuable ecosystem.